Hey Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here going over 2.08, absolute zero, liquids, and solids. So first we're going to talk about absolute zero, and to do that we have to remind ourselves what temperature is. Temperature is measured in degrees Celsius, but when we do all of the gas laws we use kelvins to measure instead of degrees Celsius. The coldest temperature in Kelvin is called absolute zero. So zero Kelvin, or zero degrees Kelvin, is absolute zero. Now technically you don't say zero degrees Kelvin, you just say zero Kelvin, but I won't mark it wrong. Temperature is measured in Kelvin and is directly proportional to the average kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the motion of all atoms and molecules. And so the faster things are moving, the warmer it is. Temperature is a measurement of kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, or Ke, equals the energy of any mass that has velocity, whether it's an atom or a planet or you. You have kinetic energy every time you move. Gas molecules move, of course, so each gas molecule has its own kinetic energy. And when we measure the kinetic energy of a bunch of molecules, that's how we find temperature. When you heat a gas, the kinetic energy of molecules goes up because each molecule moves faster. Each molecule has a greater velocity. Velocity means speed and the direction that it's going. When you cool down a gas, the kinetic energy of each molecule goes down because each molecule has a lower velocity. In other words, it's moving slower. More kinetic energy equals higher temperature. You know that. When you run around, you get warmer. When you just sit around, you cool off. Temperature. The average kinetic energy of a system. Temperature, no matter what scale you use, is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the particles in the system. In other words, it's how fast the molecules are moving around the thermometer. That's it. All molecules are always moving. No matter how cold it feels, the molecules are always moving. Solid molecules move blank, then liquids, which are blank, then gas molecules. So solid molecules move slower than liquid, which are slower than gas molecules. But what if atoms stopped moving? So I've said over and over that they're always moving, but okay, what if they stopped? Einstein predicted time would stop too. Isn't that crazy? And we call the fact that when molecules are going to stop moving, we say that that's going to happen at absolute zero. Absolute zero is specifically zero Kelvin, or negative 273 degrees Celsius, or negative about 460 degrees Fahrenheit. And the definition of absolute zero would be where the motion of atoms stop. Okay, so when atoms actually stop moving, that only happens at absolute zero, which is zero Kelvin, or these other temperatures. Why do scientists try to reach absolute zero? So scientists have been trying over and over to get things cold enough to stop the motion of atoms. Okay, when this happens, light slows down. You can actually see light coming from a light bulb and going across the room instead of instantly lighting up the room. It's crazy. Scientists can get to one billionth of a degree Kelvin. They can get to 0.0000000001 Kelvin, but they still haven't gotten to absolute zero. And so this is part of why scientists try to cool things down super cold. Very interesting things happen to matter at low temperatures. For example, when certain materials are cooled near absolute zero, their electrical resistance almost disappears. So that would be a good example of if companies needed to transport electricity and there's very little resistance, they can transport the electricity much cheaper. These materials, such as metals, alloys, and other compounds are called superconductors, and they can be used to make powerful electromagnets that produce little or no heat and consume little electricity. Such magnets can be used in particle accelerators that are used to smash atoms and explore the structure of subatomic particles like the proton and the neutron, or the energies that hold the nucleus together.
To get near absolute zero, scientists use a cascading cooling process that repeats, pressurizing, evaporating, and cooling various gases in sequence. Scientists have come within a billionth of a Kelvin of absolute zero. And this how low you could go, it just shows you that they cool it off in steps. Superconducting magnets cause levitation, so it floats, and are used to make high-speed trains. So there's a lot of practical and economical uses. Absolute zero is the measure of the average kinetic energy of motionless molecules. The only time atoms stop moving is if it's at absolute zero. Molecular motion accounts for the properties of gases. Molecules move, and thus they have kinetic energy. Heating or cooling gases adds or removes energy and changes a molecule's kinetic energy. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the molecules. All molecular motion stops at absolute zero, zero Kelvin, and nothing can be colder. Absolute temperature is measured in Kelvins. The physical properties of substances at low temperatures have interesting applications. So go temperature. We can measure it in degrees Celsius or Fahrenheit. But in science, we use Kelvin. The coldest temperature is absolute zero. And it's proportional to kinetic energy. Temperature is just a measure of kinetic energy, which is how fast the molecules or atoms are moving. All right, next we're going to talk about liquids. So part two of this lesson is liquids. Liquids have strong intermolecular forces. They are viscous, they are slightly compressible, and they flow or are fluid. Liquids. Molecules are held together more tightly than gases, but less tightly than solids. Like gases, liquids can flow and take the shape of their container, but they have definite volume and might not fill the container. So if you have a gallon of milk in a container and you spill it all on the floor, you still have a gallon of milk. You have a big mess, but you still have a gallon of milk. Liquids. Their properties are determined by the interplay between their molecules, intermolecular forces, and kinetic energies. In other words, the molecules of a liquid interact with other molecules next to them based on their speed and direction, as well as if there's positive or negative charges. So one liquid molecule is going to act with another liquid molecule depending on how fast they're going, if they're positive or negative, and the fact that they're interacting with each other that is called an intermolecular force. Inter meaning between the molecules. So it's a force between the molecules. So what keeps molecules together? So we have a solid, liquid, and gas. Solids have very low kinetic energy. They're not moving very fast. Liquids are medium. Gases have high kinetic energy or they're going really fast. The strength of the intermolecular forces, how molecules interact with the molecules next to them. These gases are spread out. They're fast. They basically ignore each other. So they have low to none for intermolecular forces. Liquids are medium. The liquids kind of interact with each other, but not a lot. Solids have very high intermolecular forces. They're very rigid, and they really care about the molecule next to them. A few other things, compressible. Now we talked about how this is all empty space. It's not air, it's empty space in between the molecules. And because of that, you can squeeze them closer together, which means they are compressible. Liquids, you can compress a little bit. Solids, nope, you can't compress them. They're already in a rigid form. Do solids have a definite volume? Do they take up the same amount of space every day? Yes. Liquids? Do they take up the same amount of space? Yes. Solid, are gases, do they take up the same amount of space? Nope, they spread out to fill up their entire container. Extra cool liquids. Extra cool because they're super cold and extra cool because, well, they're cool, they do some cool things. At sub-zero temperatures and high pressures, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen will condense into liquids. Liquid hydrogen and oxygen can be used as rocket fuels. Liquid nitrogen, like this, is used to preserve things, such as tissues and cells used in medical research by keeping them very, very crazy cold. So what you're seeing here is it's pouring liquid nitrogen, and some of it is immediately pouring over 
the edge as a gas, so it's instantly boiling in the air. Viscosity. Viscosity is a measure of a liquid's tendency or resistance to flow. Examples of very viscous liquid include syrup and honey. In other words, they are thick. Okay, when they flow, they're very thick. You can change the viscosity of a liquid by heating it. So if you heat up maple syrup or honey, is it thinner or thicker? If you heat it up, it becomes thinner and it flows easier. It becomes less viscous. Imagine a cup of liquid as a pickup truck with marbles filling the bed. The marbles are close together, but they can roll along one another. If you put down the back gate, the marbles will roll out. Liquid molecules act in much the same way. The molecule behavior allows liquids to flow. Even as liquid molecules flow past one another, they exert intermolecular forces. So in other words, they're interacting with each other and they resist that flow. This resistance is called viscosity and is proportional to the strength of the intermolecular forces. Adding energy can break bonds involved in intermolecular forces. So when you're heating it up, you're spreading out the molecules even further. And remember we talked about how gases are so far apart, they don't really interact with each other. Well, when you heat up the liquid molecules, they're moving faster and spread out and they don't care as much about each other and so they become thinner and less viscous. Okay, um, the next couple slides are from the K-12 regular lesson and they just have some interesting stuff and so I did want to spend a few minutes and go over them. So how do brakes work? Think about it. You don't walk around like Fred Flintstone and stop your car with your feet, right? But you barely press on your brake and you stop the huge car. Well, that has to do with the characteristics of liquids. So the sparse spaces or the little spaces between liquid molecules make the molecules only slightly compressible. Because of the sparse spaces between molecules, liquids are only slightly compressible and much less compressible than gases. Liquids transmit pressure. If you've ever heard of hydraulics, that's what this is talking about. This property is used in hydraulic braking systems like those in cars. Charles Law says that gases expand a lot when heated. By contrast, the intermolecular forces between liquid molecules tend to hold them together and keep liquids from expanding very much when heated. A little, but not a lot. And so when you press on your brakes, that pressure is moved around and that pressure is amplified and that's how hydraulics work and that's how your brakes work. The driver depresses the brake pedal a relatively large distance and it exerts force on a small cylinder which creates pressure. The brake fluid in the brake lines transmits that pressure to a larger cylinder around the brake shoes of the wheels. The pressure in the line depresses the brakes a short distance across the wheels. The friction between the brakes and the wheels stops the car. So even though you really don't press your brakes that far, you only press them like six inches, this is only moving like half an inch. So the fact that you have a greater distance and this is a bigger cylinder, that basically amplifies your force. Another cool thing about liquids is surface tension. Intermolecular forces give liquids surface tension. Have you ever noticed a water strider walking across the surface of the water? Maybe you have floated a paper clip on the surface of a glass of water. What holds the water strider and the paper clip up? Surface tension holds them up. It is a property of liquids and in water is especially high. Here's how surface tension works. Any particle deep within a liquid has an equal number of molecules around it. Okay, so think about if you have a glass of water, the water in the middle of the cup is surrounded, is surrounded by other molecule water, of water. So any particle deep within a liquid, so the middle of the cup, has an equal number of molecules around it, and the intermolecular forces of the molecules equally attract the particle. However, when you're at the surface, the number of molecules surrounding a particle is not equal. This imbalance draws the liquid molecules closer together, forming a sort of film on the water. So the water on top wants to be by the other water, wants to be by its family, and so it grabs on super tight, and that's how it makes almost like a skin on the top of the water. The force of intermolecular attraction within the water buoys particles on the surface, thereby creating surface tension. 
Okay, we'll finish up with liquids and continue with solids in the next video.